Loot boxes have been an argument that has been waiting to happen for quite some time. They've been around for years and have been used in quite a few different ways. Some games have them as a mechanic, like Borderlands. Others, like Eternal Crusade, use them as in-game unlockables. And some use them as rewards, like Overwatch. For Star Wars Battlefront 2, they went with the third option, which is in itself not a bad thing but then they added on the other loot box issues. They added the option to buy loot boxes, similar to games like Counter-Strike. You can buy loot boxes with microtransactions, paying small amounts of real money. Microtransactions combined with loot boxes can sometimes be questionable. Games like Counter-Strike get around the issue by having the loot boxes only put out cosmetic items, so it has no real effect on the gameplay. You can decide to buy them or not. It's not an obligation to play the game or play it well. Battlefront on the other hand had the loot boxes drop character cards. Character cards are used in the player's inventory in multiplayer. This would make the opening of loot boxes have an advantage within the multiplayer space. Opening loot boxes gives you an advantage in multiplayer. At least that was the way it was. EA, responding to the massive backlash, pulled the loot boxes saying it was going to rethink how it implemented them. Which is good, because the way they implemented them from the start was sh what was also interesting was the political backlash that happened, with state and national governments saying that loot boxes needed to be reined in, with some just saying that it was glorified gambling. Which, when real money is involved, is. Bought loot boxes that give you multiplayer advantage is gambling, as it promotes the spending of money to get randomized loot to have an advantage over other players. So for once, EA has learned that bad PR is bad and has gone into damage control mode. And it is only damage control as they've only pulled the loot box system from Battlefront and not the ones in Need for Speed and FIFA and etc etc. So now comes the question of can loot boxes be implemented well? From my view they can be but there has to be a few rules that have to be abided by otherwise it becomes very questionable. With this series being called Opinionated, it is time to delve into opinion. Here are my rules for loot boxes. 1. They must not be connected to real currency or microtransactions. That includes the in-game currency that gets the loot boxes. Because 2. They must not have an effect on player competition. An interesting example is Eternal Crusade. They have a loot box system but you get the loot boxes with the earned in-game currency that can't be bought. And while they drop items that have an in-game effect, the amount of currency that you earn per match and the cost variance of the boxes means that they can be earned easily. The game is also designed around team play and you can, using the same currency, just buy new weapons and skip the loot boxes entirely. Tying loot boxes to experience or leveling works fine, as it can work as part of the game's win-reward ratio you get randomized loot as you progress. People would then say that means the Overwatch system is okay, but three, you must not be able to get the same items again. Once you've earned an item, you shouldn't be able to get it again. These three combined points removes the gambling aspect from loot boxes. It leaves the repeatability of the boxes, but takes away the possibility that an indeterminable amount of money has to be put in because of the repeatability of the drops. It breaks the gambling cycle of input money for continued reward as there is an end. There should be a message that comes up saying, you've unlocked everything, you're done here. But with multiplayer games being the way they are now, Developers want players to play the game into infinity, but to play a game into infinity it has to make money to cover costs like servers and the like, profit to justify time spent. MMOs like Warcraft and free games like World of Tanks get by with subscriptions, microtransactions and brand deals. Some games want to have the whole cake and do them all, which is where EA came perilously close to doing. Doing so airs on the side of anti-consumer practices. Hence the backlash. Loot boxes are a contentious part of gaming and game development, and that isn't going to change anytime soon. Loot boxes aren't going to be going anywhere either. Not if game publishers have any say in it. That's why they need to be watched, but there are ways that they can be used sensibly. Key phrase, sensibly. They need to be measured in their implementation, and what EA has done with the whole fiasco is shown where the line is. Adding optional extras to make more money off the top is 
fine. Profiteering via mechanic that uses all the hallmarks of gambling to artificially extend the life cycle of your mechanically average games is another. I doubt this is the last time I'll be talking about loot boxes as there seems like there's going to be an amount of self-regulation or full legal regulation around mechanics like these. It's just a matter of time to see which path is taken and how far.